The Honourable Member from Calgary Forest Lawn. After eight long years, the Governor of the Bank of Canada confirmed that this Prime Minister and his scam of the century, the carbon tax, are not worth the cost. Scrapping the scam would put a massive dent in inflation and help lower interest rates faster. All at a time when Canadians are choosing between eating and heating their homes because of Liberal inflation and because of the carbon tax. Will the Finance Minister accept our Conservative leaders' common sense ask to axe their plans to quadruple, 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 quadruple their carbon tax in tomorrow's false promise update? Yes or no? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I'm, I'm truly glad to hear the Conservative member opposite be so excited for tomorrow's fall economic update, Mr. Speaker. You see, um, the Minister of Finance and the Deputy Prime Minister will be in this House at 4 p.m. tomorrow to reveal our books and to show the plan that we have prepared for Canadians, Mr. Speaker. This is an important moment of transparency for Canadians to see where we are at and where we are going, an important moment as well for Conservatives to actually see the numbers and use the facts in order to have intelligent debate in this House. The Honourable Member from Calgary Forest Lawn. Well, more photo ops aren't going to help anyone here in Canada, Mr. Speaker. And what we won't do as a Conservative government is create two classes of Canadians like the civil NDP government did by giving 3% of Canadians in Atlantic Canada, where the Prime Minister's poll numbers were tanking, a break, while the rest of Canadians get absolutely nothing and have to freeze and starve in the dark. Two million Canadians are visiting a food bank in a month. This, in just a single month, this Prime Minister is not worth the cost after eight years years. Will they cancel their plan to quadruple their carbon tax in tomorrow's false hopes update? Yes or no? The Honourable Minister for Natural Resources. Thank you, Mr. Then, Speaker. What the Honourable Member says is both factually incorrect and grossly misleading. We have put a price on pollution in this country, one that actually helps us to address the, the existential threat that is climate change, but do so in a manner that is affordable. Eight out of ten Canadian families get more money back than they pay in the carbon price. It is a manner that is affordable for Canadians, at the same time taking on and addressing what is a, a clear threat to the future of our children. It is such a shame that in this country we still have a political party that doesn't believe that climate change is real. The Honourable Member from Simcoe North. Mr. Speaker, after eight years of out-of-control spending by this Liberal government, experts at Scotiabank now say that two percentage point of interest rate increases are due to government spending. An extra 2% on mortgage costs means over $8,000 a year for Canadian borrowers. Canadians yeah. are realizing this Prime Minister's not worth the cost. When Scotiabank says you're richer than you think, they didn't mean spend like drunken sailors. <laughs> so on what date will the government balance the budget? <laughs> The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, let's speak about balance because our government believes that you can balance compassion with fiscal responsibility. And that is what we have shown up to date, Mr. Speaker. Canada continues to have the lowest deficit among all G7 countries. Canada continues to have the lowest debt to GDP ratio among all G7 countries. And the very report that that member is citing, Mr. Speaker, states that the major drivers of interest rate increases were COVID supports and provincial spending, not federal spending, but provincial spending, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we won't apologize for having Canadians back while being responsible. Here, here. The Honourable Member from Cinco North. Mr. Speaker, my message for any provincial premier is the same as the message for the Prime Minister. Take responsibility for the government spending because it's driving inflation and making interest rates unaffordable for Canadians. The Bank of Canada says that all governments need to spend less than 2% in order to keep inflation under control. This own government's projections in the budget in the spring says that this government will spend over 3.5% growth next year versus this year. So when are they going to get it? They are part of the problem. They have to balance the budget so Canadians can keep their homes. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. 
Mr. Speaker, the member opposite talks about responsibility. It's this government that took its responsibility seriously. When times were tough, when COVID hit, and even today, Mr. Speaker, we continue to have Canadians' backs. We don't just talk about compassion, Mr. Speaker. We act in that manner by being there for vulnerable Canadians, by being there in order to lift over 2.3 million Canadians out of poverty, by ensuring over 1 million more Canadians have a job today than they did before COVID. Mr. Speaker, we are there for Canadians while being fiscally responsible, and I am certainly looking forward to tomorrow fiscal update. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Haute Saint Charles. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Haute Saint Charles. Mr. Speaker, for eight years we've seen this NDP Liberal government with their friends in the Bloc Québécois spend without any form of control. Experts at Scotiabank calculated that these excessive forms of spending will add two percentage points to Canada's interest rates, which represents $8,000 per year in additional costs for the average mortgage. This government could help Quebecers face the cost of living. Will it listen to the experts, stop spending so much, and announce a return to a balanced budget in its mini-budget tomorrow? The, honor the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, I'm so pleased to see this enthusiasm about the economic statement f tomorrow. But I would like to hear my colleague from Quebec on the other hand, talk about what he's considering in his austerity plan. Is he thinking that we should make cuts to the new childcare spaces that we've made? Is he thinking that we should cut supports for our seniors? Is that it? I think my colleague should be specific at this point. We will be listening. The honorable, mem the honorable member for Charlebourg, Haute Saint Charles. Well, the first thing we'd cut is useless spending, like on a Rive can, and various other expenses during COVID that even the parliamentary budget officer has no idea what it was for. That's hundreds of millions of dollars that was spent on nothing. We have an incredibly long list of such expenses from this government. If we cut all that out, we get back to a balanced budget and Canadians would do a lot better. Will this prime minister come back to a balanced budget tomorrow in the economic statement, yes or no? The Honourable Minister of Transport. Well, this colleague just said that he would have cut the costs we use during COVID. Now, that's all over now, first of all. But also, he wants to make other types of cuts because that's these Conservatives' policy. What exactly would they cut? Child care? Help for seniors? Or would he do nothing about climate change? He wants us to do less on women's rights, on human rights, on... And he really wants to bring us back to the Stone Age. 